And welcome back to the Daily Dribble Podcast, guys. As always, I'm your host, Nick Zamet. Here back for another action-packed episode. Now, I say it week in and week out, the NBA, there is never a dull moment. Whether that's on the court or off the court, the action has been coming fast and furious once again this week. So very, very excited to get into the episode momentarily. Before we do so, though, a big shout out to both Stadium Scene and The Cover. Those two networks continuing to do fantastic things but not only myself here at The Daily Dribble, but also a whole host of other content creators around Australia, New Zealand, the US and Canada. So very, very appreciative of all their continued hard work and support of us here. Let's not stand on ceremony. As I said, a lot to get through today. I'm going to start first and foremost with a couple of quick odds and ends. Um, and when I say couple, there's, it's a little more extensive than that. The injury ward has been filling up very, very quickly this week throughout the NBA with injuries just at every turn, essentially. it's um, It's been ridiculous. I think they're pretty well the only updates I've seen across the last week or so. So I'll quickly recap some of them, starting with CJ McCollum from the Pelicans. He's been diagnosed with a small collapse in his right lung. Uh, the Pelicans announced this during the week. No return date set as of yet, but hopefully it shouldn't be too extensive. That being said, it's a big loss for them. He's averaging 22 points a game this season as well as the leadership he brings on court. It's quite a young young squad they've got. Um, he's one of the leaders on this squad, so him going down, they'll be certainly hoping for a quicker return as possible. Uh, he's certainly money when he's playing, so he's hoping a speedy recovery from McCollum there. The Portland Trailblazers will be without centre Robert Williams III for the entirety of the season after it being revealed he'll require knee surgery on that right knee of his. He was injured on Monday, um, in their matchup against Memphis, he's he's had a really injury plagued the last couple of years, and it's it's a real shame. Um, it's a shame because he's shown flashes. He's shown, you know, a real willingness to improve. And his time with Boston, coming over to Portland, looked like he'd get more opportunity. Unfortunately, not to be this year. Silver lining, if there is any in this kind of scenario, it's not a vital year for Portland. It's all about rebuilding. There's no need to rush him back. I take that appropriate time to get back to 100% and hopefully really, really go gangbusters on things next year. But uh, it's it's less than ideal. And you know, once you start having those knee troubles, they can, you know, be a recurring thing. I know it's the other knee he's had trouble with, but nevertheless, it's not something you want to uh, muck around with there. So he's hoping for a speedy recovery for Big Rob there. Jamal Murray will likely be sidelined for the remainder of the month because of a right hamstring strain. Now, from all reports, the Nuggets are taking quite a quite a cautious approach here. Expectation is probably three to four weeks for this one to, to properly heal and return to play. Again, for different reasons as opposed to Rob Covington, uh, Rob Williams, should I say there. It's not an injury that needs to be rushed back. Um, the Nuggets are more than capable. You look at Jokic, Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, Caldwell Pope. There's enough talent there, enough, enough offensive firepower to keep them afloat without him being there. Hamstrings, you know, I haven't had too much trouble throughout my sporting career with them, but they're notoriously just tricky little buggers. Once they kind of go a little bit, if you don't get them healed 100%, they, they will just plague you nonstop. So for Murray, I think for the Nuggets, again, take a really cautious approach with this one. They're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to be a top couple of seed. No worries. No worries whatsoever. But playing the percentages would suggest that you give him that extra time. There's no need. What are we? If, if you give him the remainder of November, I'd look a week or two into December as well and just really ensure that it's 100% before you get him back to on-court action. Um, but certainly look forward to seeing him. He is, his game has made absolute leaps and bounds over the last probably 12 to 24 months. Um, but scary for the... Uh, I, I think it's going to be scary, the numbers we see Jokic put up. Without his number two running mate there, he is going to be electric and is probably the front runner for the MVP award at the moment. Certainly a potent, a possibility that he extends that lead throughout the next couple of weeks. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing how that plays out. A guy who I've spoken about quite extensively over the last couple of weeks, Cam Thomas of the Nets, after his scintillating start to the season, he's going to be out for the next two weeks due to a left ankle sprain. Now, he went down in their win over the Clippers on Thursday. As I said, an electric start to the season, averaging 27 points, four rebounds, two assists, uh, it's a big loss. It's a big loss for the Nets, and it's, to be honest, a big loss for my fantasy team. 
Uh, I picked him up the other day and just, it's always the way, just as you pick him up, he goes down. But um, I'm sure he'll be able to pick right up where he's left off there. At the moment, Lonnie Walker's kind of a like-for-like -like replacement in that regard. Cam Johnson coming back as well. So hopefully they have enough to keep themselves afloat. Again, they've certainly surpassed my expectations so far. And no better example of that was their win over the, over the Clippers the other day. Um, but certainly looking forward to seeing Cam Thomas back fit and healthy very soon, hopefully. The injuries don't stop. The Heat will miss Tyler Hero suffering a grade two ankle sprain. He'll be in a walking boot for the next 10 days. Uh, he'll be re-evaluated, re should I say, in two weeks. But again, another injury that's it's not ideal. It's, it's not ideal for the Heat, just given their lack of depth. Again, another point that I've made reference to over the last couple of weeks. Really, really need a lot of guys to step up. Jimmy Butler also out with injury at the moment. Hopefully not too serious there. But it's still going to be a case of guys like Duncan Robinson. Bam's going to have to put the team on his shoulders here. Kevin Love, Kyle Lowry, they're really going to have to do it by committee at the moment. Um, I I think this, I, I really hope, again, ankles, hamstrings, they're all these finicky little little areas. And as I've said about the heat, with their depth, all it takes is probably one, two guys to go down with, with extensive injuries in there. Their season could quickly fall apart, so he's hoping for a, a quick recovery for Hero there. Um, but we know what the Heat are like. Grit and grind, they'll find it'll be a next man up mentality. Um, I have no doubt they'll be able to push on well enough. The LA Clippers will miss centre Mason Plumley. He's expected to be sidelined for as much as two months with an MCL sprain in his knee there. Clippers are looking to actually trade for Daniel Tice there as a replacement for him. Um, Again, not too big a loss, but a team that's sacrificed quite a bit of depth over the last couple of weeks, bringing James Harden in. They've still got enough talent there with, with Zubac kind of manning that big man role. So it's not it's not all doom and gloom, um, but it's not ideal. I think Plumlee has been more than serviceable in his time with the Clippers there. Uh, Daniel Tice would be a very good like-for-like -like replacement there. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on if that move gets done or not. That ends a big week on the injury front. I've rattled through them pretty quickly, but some very notable names there. Two other quick points I've got here. The Rockets are going to be sending their number 20 pick in this year's draft, Cam Whitmore, to the NBA G League for playing times and reps, apparently. Now, to be honest, I don't mind this. He's shown flashes, especially in that game against the Spurs. He had 17.6 steals earlier in the season. Yeah, the Rockets are traveling pretty well, and... Again, certainly, well and truly, everyone's expectations, they've just been, you know, probably one of the more surprising teams in the league to start the season. Their dominant win over the Lakers was no no better evidence of that. Uh, but with their roster improving considerably, bringing in more experience, Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, there's less time for rookies. There's less time for these young guns. I don't mind a guy who's not getting game time to head back and hone his craft, continue to develop, get some really high quality reps in with that G League team. Uh, for the Rockets, they're either going to fall off a cliff or injuries will certainly come into play as it does for every other team. So there's going to be opportunities for him later in the season, no doubt. But again, a really good opportunity for him being in an NBA environment just to continue to get game time. I know for myself and I reckon a lot of other athletes out there, all you want to do is play. Whether it's the first string, second string, whatever the case may be, all you want to do is suit up. And for him, he's going to be able to really kind of show his entire array of of, of moves, of tricks. And um, I, I quite like this. So for the G League, that's the next stop for Cam Whitmore. I don't think it'll be too long a stint, uh, but certainly looking forward to seeing him back in the NBA. When the opportunity comes, I'm sure he'll be ready. Okay, last point from Odds and Ends. Reports indicate that John Wall wants to re reunite. I'll, re I'll restart that. I'm all tongue-tied today. <laughs> Reports indicate John Wall wants to reunite with Bradley Bill in Phoenix. Now, they were such a dynamic duo in Washington. I, for one, would love to see this. Uh, I'd love to see how the roles would be reversed in their time in Washington. John Wall played that lead, that lead guard followed in behind by Bradley Bill as his number two. Things have changed a little bit over the course of the last couple of seasons with Bill asserting himself as one of the premier scorers within the league. I think it would just be electric. And for Wall, at only 33 years of age, he still has heaps to offer. 
Last season with the Clippers, he averaged 11.5 points, three rebounds, five assists across 34 games. So there's still plenty in the tank. I can let's make it happen. He's actually down. Actually, John Wall is down. He's part owner of the South South East Melbourne Phoenix here in the NBL. He's down in Melbourne at the moment, watching the throwdown against Melbourne United that's set to tip off as I record this in about half an hour's time. So I'll have to wrap this up and watch that one. Um, but as a co-owner, he's down here. He's been here for the last couple of days. I think from what I've read, he's heading to Mel, um, leaving from Melbourne, should I say, tomorrow, Monday, here in Australia. I'm actually heading over for work tomorrow. So heading into Melbourne, by any chance, by the grace of God, if I'm able to see him at the airport, we'll definitely be trying to snag him for a quick little IG G live video um, and just uh, just put the feelers out whether he uh, where he's going to be heading. I know this talk would love to get him down in the NBL if a stint the NBA is on the cards, but uh, we'll certainly be uh, harassing him to no end if I'm able to see him there. So, guys, all the more reason, if you're not already, be sure to be following all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. Who knows? We just might see John Wall grace, it, uh, grace its present over the uh, next 24 hours or so. Okay, guys, let's push ahead. The Daily Dribble. Here we go. So I wanted to focus today a little bit more on numbers that have stood out for me so far. People lie. It's a human trait. Everyone does it. Whether they're white lies or big, big lies. Everybody lies. You know what? Don't. Numbers. Numbers don't lie. So some of these are just stats and numbers that have stood out to me over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, some of them aren't 100% up to date, but you'll get the point I'm trying to make with their relevance. Uh, for better or worse, these are some numbers that have stood out. Let's start with Julius Randle. The number is 27.1. That is Julius Randle's field goal percentage through his first six games. Now, this was the worst field goal percentage through six games since 1959. Kind of startling. He made the all-NBA second team last season, averaging 25 points, 10 rebounds, four assists. So far this season, he's down to 16.5 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, and he just looks like a shell of his former self. Nothing is dropping at the moment. It's really kind of, it's almost painful to watch uh, his struggles at the moment. The positive is he's pretty well hit rock bottom. The only way is up. He's been better over the course of the last couple of games, and that's kind of coincided with the Knicks winning their last couple of games. I The Knicks, I think, are in a funny position in the East at the moment. There's a lot of teams better than them. They're kind of in that middle of the pack phase. But for them to actually be a threat, they need the best version of Randall. Needs to get that free throw percentage up. He needs to, on the three ball, he's shooting it at three, uh, 26%, should I say. He needs to get that up to at least 30. He was shooting at 34% last year, so that's got that's really got to climb quickly. As I said, he has been better in recent games, so hopefully these improved performances continue for his, his sake and the fans in New York. You're getting absolute quality out of Barrett at the minute. Brunson serviceable to really maximize these wins. They need they need Randall, and they need him better than what he is at the moment. 27% from the field, that's horrific. I could shoot better than that, I reckon. And that's saying something, because if you've seen me play, I've got a very, very ugly jump shot. Actually, not just jump shot. I've got ugly everything. From the free throw line, from a, a little... The only thing I can do is semi-decent to float up. Um, but 27%, that, that's got to go up, big man. Okay, two numbers here for the next one. Plus 47 and minus 70. This is the differential between when LeBron is on the court and off the court for the Lakers. Now, I continue to say something to this effect nearly every goddamn week at this point, but they have got to stop asking so much of a bloke who's nearly 39. He continues to be the man, and it's kind of getting beyond the joke now. He simply cannot be that bad when he's not on the court. I spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. There were going to be, apparently, he was going to be on a 30-minute cap per game. That's quickly gone out the window because if they were playing by that, that point differential would be considerably worse. Uh, the Lakers are certainly having struggles to start the season. But what more, like, what more can you possibly get out of this man? It is, you're kind of getting blood out of a stone at this point. Um, it's plus 47 and minus 70. That's a difference of 117 points. 
<sighs> Who's going to be the guy? Is it AD? Again, he went down the other day. There's always a concern for injury when he's around. Austin Reeves went to the bench the other day in their win over the Suns, which I quite liked. Um, just as that a little more offensive spark plug off the bench, which they've been lacking lately. But who's it going to be? As a Lakers fan, I'm going to con continue to track this week in and week out, but that's got to be better. LeBron's not going to be around forever. There needs to be players who are going to step up in the future, but also in the present. When he's not on the court, you cannot give away leads. You cannot give away commanding positions and blow it to high hell, which is what they're doing very regularly at the moment. So got to be better. Minus 2.3. This is the Bucs point differential. They are the only team in either conference currently in a guaranteed playoff spot across the East and Western Conference that has a negative point differential. Offense isn't the problem. They're putting up 118 points per game. They're giving up 120.3, which has them in the bottom third of the league in this regard. It's not good enough. Now, this would have only gone down further today with their loss to the Magic. There was certainly going to be teething, a teething period as Dane was introduced. Um, I'm not too concerned. It's not ideal, but they are good enough. They're just a little bit off the pace at the minute. They're kind of a team, and I, I said about at the top of the show, with Jamal Murray missing, the Nuggets are fine. If they lose games, it doesn't matter. As long as they finish in a playoff spot, they're going to do damage. It kind of rings true with the Bucks as well. I'm, I think... Like, there are holes in their game, absolutely. Brooke Lopez struggled to start the season. Um, Malik Beasley, hit and miss campaign, has been pretty semi-consistent for the most part. Chris Middleton's really been struggling. Like, there are holes there. I don't think they're catastrophic. As I said, a teething period at the moment, finding their feet, getting back into the swing of things. But this is certainly something I'm going to pay very close attention to. This defense needs to be a lot, lot better. With Lopez and Giannis in particular, Middleton's a more than serviceable defender. Likewise, Dame is actually better than people give him credit for. This needs to pick up considerably. I'd love to hear from you guys. Are you worried about the Bucs? Is there reason for con concern? Does something need to be addressed, addressed a little more drastically in this early phase of the season? Would love to hear from you guys out there on that one. The next number, 36.7. This is the amount of minutes Luka Doncic is playing per game and the impact he is having is profound. Alongside Jokic at the minute, you'd argue he's probably, him and Jokic, 1A, 1B for the MVP at the moment. Currently leading the league in scoring, averaging 33 points per game, nine rebounds, eight and a half assists, as well as a steal and a half a game. And the beautiful thing is he's doing it on tremendous efficiency. 52% from the field and 41.5% from three. And it's correlating to wins. The Mavs currently sit 7-2 and two in the Western Conference, just behind the Nuggets there. And he looks he's come in with a real, real intent this year. He looks determined. He looks hungry. And for the rest of the league, that is a very, very scary prospect. I think this, this you know, over the course of his tenure in the NBA, he's been in, incredible. Incredible to say the least. No doubt about it. No questions asked. The guy is just unstoppable. But this might be the best version of Luca we've ever seen. And as I said, if, if the rest of the league, you better be well on notice because he, uh, he could carry this team. They're getting con contrib contrib contributions, should I say. I am on fire. Contributions out of Grant Williams. Kyrie's come back into the fold. Derek Lively. I spoke about a lot of these guys. Timmy Hardaway the other week. But he's the guy. Everything runs through him. And if he can continue to do what he's doing at the efficiency he's doing it at, at the moment, the sky's the limit for the Mavs. He is that good. So watch this space. 30, nearly 37 minutes a game per, for Luca, And those minutes, what a talent. Let's go to my final number here that stood out to me. It's seven. Seven is Philadelphia's current win streak. Now, they currently top the East looking like a genuine title contender. And it's almost been addition by subtraction. Kelly Oubre's come in. He's made an immediate impact there. Embiid, once again, playing at MVP level. And Tyrese Maxey as well has taken his game 
from star to arguably superstar. I, it's fantastic to see. I kind of, I, I'm going to tie this in with another number. I lied. I said my last number was seven. I'm going to tie it in because we like numbers so much on this episode. I'm going to tie it in with another number. This season, James Harden has a plus minus of minus 13 per game, ranking 452nd out of 455 players within the league. By losing him, they may have just elevated their ceiling. They're playing much better team ball, look a lot more cohesive, really look like they're enjoying each other's time on the court. Again, it's really dependent on how far MB can take them, but tell you what, I, I, I really think over the course of the last five years, they've definitely failed to deliver on expectations. Could this be the year? I don't think they're going to probably, you know, I say this about a lot of teams, I don't think they're probably going to get a better opportunity. Uh, with the way the league's strengthening across the board, with some of the players they've got, I reckon this is their best chance. Uh, I'm excited for them. Currently a seven-game win streak. It'll be interesting to see how far that can go. But loving what I'm seeing from Philly at the moment. and Losing James Harden might just have been the best thing for them. Guys, there wraps up a very short, sharp little episode there, recapping all the latest news from the NBA. As I say, week in and week out. The action and the news on court and off court is non-stop. So it is imperative to stay up to date with it all. Be following our socials, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, as well as subscribing wherever you listen to the show, whether you listen to it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or whether you're watching this one on YouTube. Certainly appreciate all the continued support. I want to go, as I said, I want to go see what's happening with the throwdown now. Melbourne United, South East Melbourne Phoenix about to tip off. And uh, he's hoping I can get a hold of John Wall tomorrow. Guys, till next week, have a fantastic week. Enjoy everything that basketball has to offer. I can't wait to speak to you again soon. See you later.